Evan, I'm, but the key thing is that I'm going to change position in this shot and get a car. You should stay one constant speed. You should stay the same distance away from the ice track at all times. So don't look what this car is going to go. It's going to go forward and backward. There's never anybody driven. Nobody's ever driven. And I say this far away from the ice track? No, closest. No, the ice track. No, no, this is no, not close at all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're not going to use that again. Wait a little bit. Wait a little bit. So we get to the top of the hill. No, I have not. I see her go by. Did you sign paper? They should turn right now. Yeah, the stall is getting He stops me. Did you sign paper? She Forget did. Rose. What you doing? You gonna say hello? Did she sign the paper? I'm still walking. Did she sign the papers? Did she sign the papers? Shit! She didn't sign. Come on, come on. We can still catch her. Come on. And markers. And no marking. That felt pretty good. I felt like we should clear right. when we did. Uh -huh. I felt like we should get out when we did. Yeah, radio yeah. might yeah. Jeremy? Yeah. Jeremy, what did you get? You get the little mom who's down there. Did she get this before too? She knows it. And to cut. Cue, cue her a little later, David. So you start to start to sense the opening and go behind her and then so when the door closes, you're already in the right position to reveal the tornado on the side. Your fur is not built. Yeah, you guys really want to keep channel one. Yeah, the Yeah, that's good. I'm to go. Well, I never look that way in the Yeah, probably. fine. Then a little pass, a little, pass, a little yeah. pass, then her car comes by. And if the car comes by, you yes, say, yes. this is on the pages. That's oh. the only cue, oh, okay? okay? Yeah.
stick him right in there. Am I staying on him? Yeah, so I gotta wrap him in uh, 620 on a 10 though? hour, right? Jim, you're going to have to Jim, hold on to okay. him. I don't have him. Because sideways, so if you start your hill when you're on top of the bridge, the first part, aim it sideways, and as soon as you pass the bridge, I would say like about 10, 15 yards, then you aim it towards them, okay? You know what? I'm going to how much ice we got left? I'll check with Swami. Swami, how much ice we got left? Just pass the bridge by quite oh, yeah, a bit. Half, halfway, halfway up. up. Yeah, yeah. You got it. Okay. Uh, Leo, has that's, uh, Leo has one. And inside the car, can Helen hear me now? All three of them. You better check this one first. He's crazy. He's Twister crazy. The beach. He's, He's very crazy. crazy. <laughs> yeah, medium sure. explosion. Sure, we'll you know what I'm you saying? Right. Like, uh, is the car coming back? Yeah, it is coming back. <laughs> it's got to tilt you down. You're going to loosen it up now? Just wander. Uh, so even if they don't have to be spooked, you just let them wander. Okay. Right? I just want if they get spooked. Make it bigger. Okay. A little we bigger. We got another one. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now on the hood, back. Go ahead and just crack it. Okay. Thanks. Steve, I gotta get that ambulance on the corner down here. And open it all the way. All right, that's good. That's good. Yeah, this shouldn't be more than that. That's good. Okay, that's great. Okay, so if you can give me then another little s small yeah, fire down the there behind the horse, that'd be great. It's better there. See, there's a camera over here in this auto store. When that truck comes by, it's going to be looking right this way. So I want to see all this blood. Hold this arm down like that. Perfect. Right in there. 
There you go. So many injured people. If the alarm had sounded, they would have gotten out of here. Mm -hmm. They would have been gone. They would have, you know, they would not that many people would have been injured. Does and it make you wonder if it's just too late? The alarm sounded too late. I mean, I like this better, but. You know, but the alarm never sounded. I think it really never sounded. I okay. think it's more. It's, just, it's really. It states more what really makes it clear how important it is that it is going to be a better warning system. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. the key. That's Roll sound. So I'll give you the phone. Boom up, guys. Boom up. Boom up. Quicker, quicker, quicker. Officer, have a donut. You're all set. Thank you. Put right. in camera. Yeah. So right. anyway, if the car is in this area, then you can do it. Pop it off. Yeah, you got it. Okay. See what? And basically, once you pass that car, the shot is over. Oh yeah, Jonas, his team, Jonas will be right here. He's going to be interviewed by uh, his own guys. He's looking like he's recording. Now you guys go straight that way, okay? Here, and after yeah. I pass this car, the shot's over. I mean, yeah, you, you, exactly. Can I so, get way down there? Because I got the whole team behind me. No, 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 no. The team is not behind. You guys are way ahead of everybody. Way ahead of everybody. You're all by yourself. Great, great, great. So you're gonna fall. This is not a. This is the key scene. The line of sound. Yeah. yeah, no worry. Joe, so we don't know. Look, look at them. Look at the people. It's because you see people everywhere. It's like totally. They're like dolls, you know. They have to. Uh, just get all the Jonas team together. I want the one that's all bloody. Talk to them. Uh, yeah, I'm out of blood, so. <laughs> you hang right here. I'll get something for you to do. Spot like 300 <laughs> horse powers and you get stuck. Well, listen, man, it's it was pretty embarrassing. And you wanna, and you wanna be a Formula One race car driver? Okay, but this is a better speed. Let's just do it and see if we can prevent a little stop. And that's it. There's a couple people on stretchers. There's some stunt people down there. In the road there? I slowed down, and that's why I got stuck. There were two. I'll take care of that. Just make sure they're out of the road. They were too close to the path. You know, at the beginning, also, the horse was sort of. Yeah, the horse, unfortunately. He's like, whatever. You guys look like you were chasing the horse. I'm trying to the horse. The horse, there was no horn in the car. It's a big white shot. It's a movie. It's a big white shot. The horse is like.
Okay, pal? Electronic press kit. <laughs> well, I was just going to ask you to bump that and see if one around. That's a lot of words for a very simple. Very good. Yes, now I'm ready. Here I go. This insanity is the poor town of Waukita, which we've successfully completely destroyed. Um, Bill Paxton and I have a running joke since the day we got on this film, which is that we look at each other once in a while and go, it's a big movie, it's a really big movie. I play a woman who chases tornadoes uh, for a living, a scientist who is interested for research purposes and personal purposes to find out about tornadoes. Um, Someone who was touched by one early in her life and has bordering on an obsession with getting near these things. These are two people who uh, used to do this together. Um, this instrument pack was his idea. And what we've tried to build is this very long and sexy history between these two people. Tons of chemistry that then exploded. Um, and I call him back to supposedly give him some divorce papers, but also woo him into going on this chase with me because this is the 24 hours of the biggest storm, one of the biggest storms in history. And I'm surprised with the news that he's actually engaged. We've created this, uh, this instrument pack called a Dorothy, which, is, which we hope to get inside a tornado so that we can understand more what makes it work that she's the idea is that she's sort of tornado like in in her uh, unpredictability and her and and we all sort of like the idea that she's the kind of woman you really hope you don't fall in love with because you know there's she leaves a damage path like this wherever she goes and those are things that I hadn't seen in a movie before and I thought I can play this part and and Jan just ferociously wanted me to play it and I I was so flattered by that, and there's no better way to start an enormous experience like this than to know that the director has, ref you know, refused to meet all these incredible actresses because he has a sense that you're right for it, and and maybe that's what made me feel like I was right for it. I, I was very nervous to take it in a way because I'm, I'm working on my show and then doing this movie and then going right back to work on my show, but I also had this sense that I was, like, meant to play this part, so here I am. That's fantastic. One of the things I like about Mad About You is that I'm hugely involved um, in every aspect of it. And one of the beauties of this experience is that I am, I feel like a soldier rather than a general, you know. Uh, he, it's his movie and I am very proud to try to complete his vision of it. Uh, the night before we started shooting there was an awesome thunderstorm, thunder and lightning storm. <laughs> And as an actor, you always hope that there'll be some omen that you were born to play the part or that you're, you know, perfectly suited. The night before this movie started, I was lying in my bed going, if there were a tornado coming, I would run the other way. 
it, I feel like the way Jan shoots is, is like that. He wants it very much, he said, to be like this action is going on and the cameras just happen to be there catching it. And so everybody sort of has to get into that frame of mind if they're going to be here. I've met some interesting people who do this and I ask them all, aren't you afraid? And they all say, no, they're not. They're fascinated. Um, I think there's as many different reasons as there are people who do it. You know, there's some who um, do it for science and some who do it for sport and some who do it for both. These guys have these armadas of cars and they're out. What they basically do is they, they go out as a convoy and when they get close to a storm, they all split up and try to kind of surround the storm or the tornado and they try to collect different data. So you've got this kind of driving thing. These storms are going to hit. They're going to hit with this storm system that's going to last maybe 24 hours and that's going to be that. They, they're, they're, it's, it, there is a race against time. There's a race to get to these storms. They're, they're falling all over the state. So there's just this inherent drive. So a lot of the movie is driving. I mean, uh, I've never done so much driving. Not only did I drive a lot in the movie, but God, I put 14,000 miles on my rental car, driving all over Oklahoma and Kansas and, uh, and Iowa. And in the next 24 hours, <coughs> uh, what occurs is kind of like what occurred in April 3rd and 4th of 1974 what they call a super outbreak, where tornadoes from a storm system were literally 148 tornadoes were formed and dropped over about 11 state area, killing about 350 people. And, and uh, so this is, this is the moment, it's coming. And, these, and so the tornadoes start out fairly small, but then each one becomes progressively larger and they kind of herald the king. They're, they're hoping in their attempts to get close enough to a tornado to possibly learn ways of creating a better warning system to, to, in, in the hopes of eventually saving lives. And also just to, the, the, to understand better um, what takes place inside of a tornado. There's still uh, a lot of unanswered questions. They understand the, um, the atmospheric things that come together to cause them. But they're, they, for years they've been trying to get a weather package, kind of like a flight recorder, inside the twister. To do the reaction shots of the actors, they had to have wind machines. Uh, not only did they have a, an army of Ritter fans, but they actually had a, a jet engine mounted on an 18-wheeler, a commercial jet engine that would, with a hopper above it that dropped debris down that blew at us. When I went in to meet Jan de Bont, uh, before he cast me in this movie, his main thing with me was he had seen a couple of the films I was in. He was, he was most anxious to know how I felt about the physicality, the, uh, you know, the physical demands of the role. And I, I was up for it. I read the script. I saw what was required of the actor in that role. And I, and I loved it. I started running three miles a day two months before I did this movie. Uh, because I, I wanted to be up for this. I was, I was excited. Uh, Jan likes to put the actors very close to the action, like I've said, and uh, that was okay with me. Well, in a way, our relationship kind of affects what's happening all around us with these storms that are moving in. We were a very tempestuous couple. We worked in the same field. We were highly competitive, but there was a part of her that I could never kind of get close to. And finally, they just, we just burned each other out. Well, we haven't seen a tornado in a film since basically The Wizard of Oz was the last tornado I remember. We've seen hurricanes, Hurricane Andrew, all the uh, natural disasters. We've seen earthquakes, fires, lots of movies, but I, to my recollection, none about tornadoes. And so that intrigued me.
My character is uh, Melissa, Dr. Melissa Reeves. I'm a psychologist and I help people with reproductive issues. Uh, I am also the fiance of Bill Paxton's character and he used to be a storm ch chaser and is now a weatherman. And we are living in Oklahoma City. We want to get married. We need divorce papers signed and his wife, Helen Hunt, uh, invites us down. She will not sign the papers until he comes down and sees her face to face. And so I go with him, of course, on the biggest storm brewing weekend in the century and I kind of get up uh, get involved uh, in this storm chasing something that I've never done so I'm really kind of like the audience because I know absolutely nothing about what he did prior to his life with me so I know nothing about tornadoes I know nothing about you know the weather and the hail and the so it's I'm seeing it for the first time with the audience Melissa definitely is the character who says, you know what, this is not normal. People who put themselves in danger like this and put themselves this close to a natural disaster, it's not normal. And so I'm the one who's saying, are, are we sure this is safe? Uh, you all are crazy. You know, it's like children, don't go out and try this at home. If you hear there's a tornado warning, go into your cellar. But these people don't. I mean, these are real, actual people that have this as a job. Storm chasing is their job. What I think Jan is hoping to do is bring people as close to a tornado as you'd ever want to get without ever having to hurt yourself whatsoever. And it's ominous. I've seen some of the footage that ILM is doing and it's wild. It's just going to be a wild ride. And, and if you could sit back and really just enjoy it, 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 it will take your breath away. Well, what makes Twister so exciting, I think, is that the fact that tornadoes are unpredictable and they shoot down at any moment and you're chasing it. You're basically chasing the weather and if you've spent any time in Oklahoma, which many people have, many people have not, the weather changes constantly and these storm chasers are in their cars speeding down highways chasing a storm and then suddenly you have to stop because the storm turns around back at you uh, you know and then you're running away from the storm so it's it's that cat and mouse chase with the weather with this great ominous thing that these storm chasers deal with and that's where the rush comes from and it's also a great race between two teams who, who are you know challenging each other to get there first and one team would be willing to share information the other team isn't so willing to share information and it's 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 man against nature and it's wild it's a wild ride I just think the whole phenomena of, of tornadoes is one that up until this point totally escaped me. Uh, I don't profess to know everything about them. I don't think anyone does. I just know a lot more about them now than I ever did. And, and they're fascinating, uh, fascinating things to, to, to witness if you, if you ever have the opportunity to, to, to do that. It's one thing to see them on tape or hear about people talking about him. But it's quite another to be there and see one. Well, he's the famed director of speed, that out of control bus that you can't get below 50. Now he's dealing with an out of control tornado. They've um, spared no expense at uh, bringing reality to, to the situation. I mean, it, as you can see behind me, this is the town of Wakita that that only a few days ago uh, had nice, beautiful, sparkling uh, sidewalks has now been laid waste to look as if an F4 just uh, trampled right through it. And, and just to walk around that and just see how close it looks to the footage that, that I've seen and I'm sure others involved with this picture have seen, it, the, the, it's uncanny. And I think even the locals are kind of stunned. They're out there, and you know, a lot of them are the extras, and they're like looking around, they're going, my God, I guess this is what would happen if a tornado hit us, you know? And it's a, it's a pretty hairy thought. We've all become avid uh, weather channel 
watchers now as a result of this picture. I mean, I never used to study the weather at all until this picture started. You know, um, you know, occasionally I'd look at the news, I go, oh, it's going to be warm tomorrow, and uh, uh, partly cloudy. And you know, most of the weather, they're like, well, it's partly cloudy, maybe some showers, could be sunny. They never know. But now, I'm looking at the map on the board now, I'm going, well, uh, that cold front uh, looks like uh, it's looking pretty hairy right there. What's going on with the uh, jet stream? Huh? I think there could be a storm coming this way, you know? It's based around two teams who are chasing and trying to deploy the same uh, instrument pack so that they can, uh, uh, inside of a tornado, so that they can uh, discover new hidden secrets about the core of a tornado and thereby develop a new advanced early warning system. Maybe I'm different as a director in that way that I direct from very much from an audience's point of view. I direct what I would like to see if I was an audience sitting in the theater. So that's why I don't do big those those, those big shots where the people normally have in normal movies. They they you know they shoot a whole scene in one shot and then and uncover it. I can't do that. I want to because every shot to me has to be different because my mind is an audience. So I want to see this. I want to see that. Oh wow, this is great too. Let me get that. Let me see it from this angle, from that angle. So I want to see the. I want to put those cameras on all those incredible, exciting places to really you know get the audience involved because I'm the audience. Well, the only comparison that you maybe could make is that people tend to say that Speed was a very fast-moving picture. I think this one is a little quicker, <laughs> a little faster. <laughs> And also, they, they love the adrenaline of getting close to a tornado. I mean, and it's like we all want to see, want to be close to danger. We don't get, we're not going to get too close, but close enough so that we get the adrenaline uh, going. Because I wanted to make, the, I wanted to, 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 to get a very realistic look of it. I looked at tons and tons of films, of documentaries about those tornado chases and about what sort of tornado, tornadoes look like. And, and it's all very rough. And I wanted to get the feeling you know, for the audience that they were really participating in this movie, that they were making the same kind of, you know, trip, you know, through all those, those, those wild circumstances to get there. And so the movie's kind of shot almost in a documentary way. It feels very rough, it feels like things go wrong and, 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 and not always very, in a, not in a pretty way. And, and, and things happen to them that are quite unique and I, you know, you're going to have to see the movie what will happen exactly, but it is, it is one of those things where you slowly get be, is, are being pulled into the movie and you basically drive in that car at one, at one point. You're one of those guys, you become, the audience is going to become one of those chasers and, 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 and trying to search for that tornado. I, I, I see that's my number one choice. From the moment I read the script, I knew this was only one person could play the part. I absolutely, actually two people, I mean, I, I, both Helen and Bill, I knew from day one, they had to be, the, you know, the Joe and Bill. This, and I was like, oh, God, how do you get her? You know, and she's doing this TV, this TV series, very successful, and 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 she had never done one of those big movies, and the studios were a little bit worried about, you know, taking the risk of, you know, movie not finishing on time, and then having her to go back to the TV series. What are you going to do if we run over schedule? And and I finally convinced him that it is more important to have an actor, actress that's perfect for the part, than you know, than the risk you would take by maybe losing a week or so at the end or two weeks. And they finally agreed with me, and, and she turned out absolutely perfect. It couldn't be, couldn't be better. But I like women to be really strong. That's what I liked in Sandy, Sandra Bullock in, in Speed. She's a strong woman. She knows what she wants. She's in control of her own life. And, and the same, I have the same feeling with Helen Hunt. She knows exactly what she wants. She's very smart, very educated. And, and, and I, feel, you know, I, I feel real emotion with her. It's not played. It's not artificial. It's a real human being. You cannot, you cannot, you know, you cannot bring actors or crew for that matter close to a tornado. I mean, they would die. And, I mean, nobody, so I was smart enough not to bring any. So the moment there was a tornado warning even close by, so okay guys, let's stop, let's move, let's move away from them because you can't do it. It's just too dangerous. So we knew we had to, to create tornadoes in, in the computer. And we have done a lot, of, a lot of testing before we started the movie because we wanted to make absolute sure that, we, that the test would work and that we could do that in a realistic way. 
and and the test turned out to be very good, very successful, and 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 that kind of convinces to make the movie basically. But the film is full of effects, they're pretty unique effects. It's it's kind of another breakthrough, which is kind of nice because it is so photorealistic. Because the movie being shot in a documentary way, the effects have to be and has to have the same feeling to it. It's it's very very hard to do. You know, there's no steady steady shots. Everything is like rough and on the go and running and moving and which is really hard for any computer company to do that, you know. Yeah, that's, uh, nobody actually really know, I mean, the, the, the F5, which is like the most powerful tonight, they can go over more, more than a while, mile wide, and, and, and this wind speed of up to 300 miles an hour inside, a, inside the core, which is like two to three times as, as, as strong as the as a biggest hurricane, it's totally, you know, it totally pulverizes everything. Nothing's left. It's like a, it's like never even existed before. So the power is un unbelievable. Well, you know, when I first went into Oklahoma and I started meeting a lot of these guys and I asked exactly this question, why do you do this? What got you into it? And the interesting thing I found out was many of them cited stories of their childhood where they literally remember experiencing a tornado when they were five or six years old and at that moment decided it was something they needed to better understand. So they really chase because they want to to some extent, they want to get inside one of these tornadoes. At the same time, they really want to experience, learn, be a part of predicting the weather. They take it very seriously. Most of them are scientists. Um, they actually reference some of the storm chasers who don't do it for scientific reasons as being yahoos. So that sort of distinguishes one from the other. But uh, they take it very, very seriously. And I, I think they... They believe, and I happen to agree, that they do make a, con a contribution. I think in the long run that chasers will provide valuable information toward an ability to create warning systems for that part of the country so that hopefully lives can be saved. In, in this case, I think that Helen Hunt really embodies somebody who uh, immediately has a sense of self-confidence uh, very independent and actually that's been the source of their problems is that in a sense she doesn't entirely need her husband for that kind of support she's very capable on her own however emotionally she needs him so that's really what develops and evolves through the course of the story is that they recognize a need for one another well, I think that Jan is a phenomenal shooter. I mean, this movie, in terms of action, goes beyond speed. So it is nonstop, and Jan is nonstop. I mean, he moves faster than any person on the crew. So it becomes really a job of keeping up. And Jan is usually running, placing every camera himself. He works with multiple cameras on every single shot so that you have a very fast-cutting, quick moving energy to every single scene in the movie. What, what a movie like this does, it only gives you more respect for nature. Because as you're trying to duplicate just a little tiny scene, what it is you have to put into that to even come close to what the actual event would look like is phenomenal. Well, you know, disaster is kind of a funny word because I think Whenever you can deal with phenomenal natural events, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, fires, things like that, we tend to think of them as being extraordinarily beautiful at the same time that they're extremely dangerous. And in this case, tornadoes are incredibly fascinating. And the minute you see the sky and the lightning and then the formation of a tornado, you can't take your eyes off it. Well, the emotions are that, it, on the one hand, it's very exciting, which I think always happens with these kind of natural phenomena. It, it's exciting and it's scary at the same time. So on the one hand, you want to be able to see it. On another hand, you want to make sure you don't get hurt. So there's this, 
I, I know we had one situation when we were filming where we had a situation develop where it got very, very dark. Then lightning, and it was lightning, you know, 70, 80 strikes around you happening at once, and then this downpour of rain. So for about five minutes, it's very exciting, and then you start thinking, okay, how am I going to get out of here? 